Hello, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, today is October 26th, and this is the EU US edition. Uh, today we have myself and Bruno Verrockton. Welcome, and uh, if anyone joins up, we'll welcome them in. Uh, so for the agenda, uh, so as far as Google Summer of Code, that's been complete now. Um, really, uh, the main focus for the documentation SIG is the version documentation site for Jenkins.io. So uh, we'll stick to those updates. The other uh, three projects were completed successfully, and everything needs a little bit more work to get it uh, deployed into production with the info team. So all that work is being done uh, in the background. But uh, for the version documentation, um, Chris has been working on this uh, after he and Vandy finished the project in Google Summer of Code. He's continuing to work with the infra team to get that determined and what we need to do to just get that last uh, little bit for it finished up and past the finish line. Uh, he's got a prototype site that we've linked uh, previously and still have here, which shows the version documentation site. It's built using Antora. So uh, really nice, really great to see. And uh, yeah, more, more to come, but uh, we'll get there, we'll get there. Uh, next thing is, on the agenda is uh, the blog post for the Plugin Health Scores announcement uh, that was written by Adrienne. And uh, this was just published yesterday, uh, but as part of the Google Summer of Code, the Plugin Health Scoring project and adding probes to it. Um, so this is complete. These are This is now live and you will see a Plugin Health Score on the plugins.jenkins.io uh, page. Uh, so let's just go to one and we'll just go to coverage, uh, or in, I'm sorry, is it the overall plugins page? Gotta be. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, the health score is visible here. Uh, and yeah, the, the health score tab is what we're actually looking for. That will display the health score itself uh, in each and every uh, individual aspect that contributes to the score. So you can see here uh, security, update center, deprecation, et cetera. They're all reaching 100. The repository configuration is at a 65, but um, it's for a couple different reasons, not just one overall reason. And then you get the aggregated score, which is great. Um, Adrian has written the blog post to help us understand that plugin health score and what that all means. It explains a little bit further about what the background is and what the scores mean uh, and some background on everything else. So uh, really great to see, really lovely development. This has been ongoing for the past year or so. Um, this was a project that started in Google Summer of Code 2022. So to see it finally uh, released live on the page, really, really great to see that uh, that progress and that completion. So the big thanks to Adrian for all of that, all of his work and uh, the Google Summer of Code participants that helped get this along as well. Uh, none of this would be possible without the community. So wonderful, thank you very much. Uh, as we've been saying uh, for the last couple of weeks, prototype JS has been removed as of Jenkins uh, weekly version 2.426. Um, this is going to be implemented in the November 15th LTS release, which will be uh, 2.426.1, uh, that is the baseline choice that'll be releasing in a couple of weeks and that prototype removal will be part of it, uh, along with all the other updates and changes that, that have happened. And I've started compiling and reviewing the change log entries so that we can get that change log and upgrade guide added uh, and available for review uh, a little bit sooner than I have been able to in the last couple of releases just to make sure there's plenty of time for review and any updates that might happen. Uh, for Hacktoberfest 2023, we are getting close to the end. It is uh, the 31st is next Tuesday. Uh, so uh, data to report between last week and this week. So um, we've had 832 total, total PRs created between the Jenkins CI and Infra organizations, which is great. Uh, it's up from 653 last week. Uh, total Hacktoberfest PRs created, so two, 340, which is another um, 80 since last week, which is great five new contributors, which is fantastic. And then uh, the total validated Hacktoberfest PRs. So out of those 340, we have 280, 281, which is great. Again, uh, up about 90 or so uh, and uh, 18 more contributors, which is great. So uh, we're just seeing those numbers increase despite there being a uh, drop between last year, other previous years and this year, it's a little bit lower. However, uh, even though the spam rate there and the uh, con contribution is a little bit lower, this is a common theme across other projects. Um, but mm -hmm. the important part is we are seeing great work from these contributions. Um, the, the important piece is the effort and the work and the, and the experience that these folks are getting as opposed to you know, pure numbers. Obviously, more is better in this case. But 
Um, if we're getting a 100% success rate from the 45% of contributors or whatever that number is, that's fantastic. So uh, October Fest 2023 is going really well. Um, there's And there's plenty of reasons that there could be a dip in participation, um, too many to go over. So thanks to uh, Jean-Marc and Alyssa and uh, everyone for their help with Oktoberfest. That's uh, really, truly appreciated. Uh, documentation updates for the Debian packages. So this was something that was just done recently and was backported uh, to make it sure that it is to part of 2.414.3. Uh, but basically we've updated the installation pack, uh, package instructions from using curl to wget. Um, this was sparked by a discussion from a contributor who submitted a pull request saying, you know, this isn't necessarily uh, universal as we would like it to be. Um, maybe we should ch take a look at other options, something that might be defaulting uh, within the installation. Granted, everyone's installation process and setup and environment could be very, very drastically different. The basics are there, but there are always little things. Uh, so we'll, it's, uh, it's an update that we're gonna have there now. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully everything is okay. No one has any issues with it, um, but the process is the same there. So hopefully this doesn't hurt anyone's experience. Uh, we had the September newsletter published just last week. So uh, thanks to all the SIG leaders that have provided updates and uh, continue to share what we've been up to. Um, it's really nice having a newsletter to look back on and share with uh, the community as a whole and uh, those outside of the community as well. Uh, something that's more digestible and a little bit higher level to share all the success Jenkins has. The new one is in the writing, by the way, the October one. Yeah, we're getting to the end of October. The uh, October newsletter is uh, being populated now and we'll be publishing that in early November. Hopefully next week or the week after, yeah. So SIG, uh, SIG meeting owners, uh, please, if you don't have your section uh, filled in yet, uh, think of it. That is directed at me. And that's fine. No, I know not I at all. Uh, yeah, you're <laughs> one of them. But frankly, I haven't done my part yet either. So yeah. I'm guilty. Everyone's a little guilty right now. It's OK. Um, yeah, no, the October edition will be coming soon enough. and. Uh, like Bruno said, hopefully we can get it all taken care of so we can publish it next week, where uh, next week is November 1st. So came up out of nowhere. Uh, well, uh, anyway, uh, anything else on the newsletter or um, sorry, no. Bruno, anything else that we've gone over so far that I haven't given you a second? Mm, no, I may have a few words to say about Java 21 and 17 okay. and so on, but yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we're there. So <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> Uh, the, the Java 11, 17, and 21 um, proposal has been turned into a Jenkins enhancement proposal. Thanks to Mark for submitting this. Um, everything we've discussed over the last handful of weeks is here, including all the documentation, images, diagrams, visual aids, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, everything is consolidated here. Uh, and what's great to see is that there are several different discussions happening uh, within this JEP. So that's really fantastic to see. And we're getting a lot of different perspective, both from uh, Jenkins, uh, higher level Jenkins users and contributors uh, to others and everything in between. So this is really fantastic to see. Uh, a lot of the discussion is trying to determine how useful and how can we make sure that the notifications in the monitor uh, is as useful as possible. Uh, there's a fine line between saying something way too early and getting ignored and saying something way too late and not having enough time to fix things. So there is a balance. We're working on that balance right now. The discussion is happening. Uh, and it's great to, like I said, it's great to see. So people like Tim Jacome, Daniel Beck, uh, James Nord, Mark is commenting on a lot. Like these are the important questions and discussions to be having. Uh, and getting multiple perspectives on how this may or may not be useful is invaluable. Yeah, we won't be able to make everyone happy. We'll have to <laughs> take, 
take a decision in the end. But uh, this discussion is really helpful because we can hear, hear about all the different people having different um, thoughts about that. And I even saw earlier today in the mailing list, I guess, somebody saying that, oh, um, your proposal is pretty nice, but I don't think you're right when you say that we'll have a Timurin release every two years for the LTS and so on. So I, I may have uh, misunderstood, but the discussion was kind of interesting because Mark then uh, gave a link and an excerpt from uh, Temerin that said that, yes, we'll have an LTS every two years or something like that. So don't you be afraid. Uh, you won't have to use Oracle JDK uh, just <laughs> because we say that we would switch from uh, an older version of JDK to a newer one uh, every two years or so. But yes, lots of things are bubbling uh, these days mm -hmm. around JDK 21 and the future of Jenkins with other uh, LTS JDK. And I, I love seeing that. The community is very much alive. Definitely. And uh, yeah, and I think uh, referring to the thread that you had mentioned in the developer thread or the developer mailing list rather. Um, so my understanding was they were worried that what happens if something is no longer supported and there's no one to take yep. it over and uh, manage it after that fact. And Mark's response was, like you said, he provided a link, some insight and some reassurance that that's not going to be the case with this stuff, which is really fantastic to have that kind of just, like I said, reassurance of that sort of thing. Um, and I, and I like the fact that different types of users are commenting, like Daniel Beck is part mm -hmm. of the security team. So he's looking at it from a security perspective or from a perspective of someone who deals with that end of things. James is a developer. So he's looking at it from how does this help my development? Um, Tim Jacome, also a developer, looking at it from how does this help my development? You know, this is the kind of, these are the kind of things that we need to have discussions around. Um, because like, like you said, Bruno, we can't please everyone, but we can come yep. to a consensus and make a decision that does support the most people we can, or that is the best decision for Jenkins as a project going forward. There are ways to, to determine that part, and that's, that's what this is about. Uh, and uh, for the record, too, I think something I wanted to mention just a little bit about that, that idea that what if this is not supported um, in two years' time. And, and I think the, the biggest thing is the fact that um, the idea is not necessarily to just drop it completely, but that we have a two years where it's supported, two mm -hmm. years where it's required, two years where it's getting phased out kind of thing. It's not immediately going to drop overnight like that until we get to the, the end of that cycle, but that will be plenty of time after we start supporting and requiring the, the next version out. So there will be plenty of time to take care of any loose ends, but... Um, yeah, that fine that fine line of is this going to be ignored or heated uh, in with a with a twelve month you know lead up time or an eighteen month lead up time? What's that going to look like? Yeah. And what I found funny this week, I already talked about that in the um, uh, platform meeting uh, earlier this week, is that we have kind of a large or huge spectrum of <laughs> end users. Uh, on the left, we have users who say, oh, you already made me quit uh, GDK 8 last year. It's been a nightmare. And now you want me to get rid of GDK 11 in 18 months or something like that? Or oh, next year, October 2024? I'll never... <laughs> I won't be able to do that. That's very difficult for me. And on the other hand of the spectrum, we have people who say, hey, I'm maintaining a plugin. I want to write uh, GDK 21 code. You know, when will I be able to write uh, GDK 21 compatible code? That's funny. Yeah, it is. It is interesting to see like those two ends of the spectrum. Like you said, just like, I don't know that we can do this. I want to do this yesterday. Let's go. Like, that's a really funny mirror, to so, mm -hmm. so to speak. So, uh, but but yeah, but like both those perspectives are hugely valuable and and actually completely correct. You know, uh, yep. there are tons of reasons why that changeover could be a nightmare for some folks, and that has to be that has to be respected. That has to be considered when it comes down to how are we going to do this or facilitate this change. Yeah, and that's also why we see um, GDK eight vendors. Uh, okay, we are dealing with GDK eight for several more years as long as people. Uh, pay uh, for support uh, because yes some people just can't 
move away from GDK8 like that. They have very heavy processes and it's totally legit. They can mm -hmm. do so, but sometimes we have to progress with the project. So yeah, let's go ahead and move GDK yeah. versions. And this might be a, uh, a, a US thing specifically, but I'm just picturing going to like the doctors of the hospital and seeing them using Windows XP uh, back in like 2011, 2012, when that was very uh, out of date. And um, yeah, it, like there are those circumstances where holding on to something older makes more sense sometimes mm -hmm. uh, or is valuable for a reason. We yeah. don't want to take that away. We're not saying you can't have it, but we have to make decisions for the betterment of Jenkins overall, the future. Um, how, you know, how are we going to sustain this in two, four, six, ten, twenty years down the like, you know, things will change between yeah. now and then, but these are important to consider. And I know it's obvious, but it doesn't hurt saying it. Uh, it's not because Jenkins does not support GDK eight anymore that you can't use GDK eight for building your software, which needs GDK eight. So it's just the machine, the controller can't use GDK8 anymore. Your agent can't run on GDK8 anymore, but you can use GDK8 or even maybe older versions of JDK if you need to with your builds. That's not a problem. Yeah. And yeah, that uh, for the, there's going to be further developments on there. That is not something that's going to be uh, determined in any times, at least in the immediate future. Um, so this is all just proposals working and uh, discussions at this point in time. So please keep that energy uh, up. And if you feel strongly one way or another, feel free to co comment, contribute, or uh, you know share that in the JEP, uh, in the JEP so that um, we can have that conversation, we can have that discussion. Uh, so last thing on the agenda, as far as discussion goes, is the update CLI discussion that we've been having the last couple of weeks. Um, before yes. we start that, uh, just so, really quickly. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Bruno. Yeah, it may need, sorry, uh, it may need a few uh, tweaks here and there. Uh, what I was hoping for is uh, the community discussing the um, utility of this. If it's needed, is it a good idea? Or is it a bad idea? We'll see. Um, so it could be merged as is, but I don't know. Uh, I would like to get uh, some more reviews uh, just in case. And then I know I have some other draft PRs which will be follow-ups for this one because we can ameliorate that. So mm -hmm. no hurry. Um, but if we don't get any more comments in the coming weeks, maybe we could uh, merge it. Yeah. And or not. I mean, I, yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's reasonable that we could potentially merge it. Um, it wouldn't do it wouldn't change anything about how anything's being run or anything it would just be creating a new log at that point mm -hmm. or new logs um so it shouldn't interrupt any usage or any sort of anything else um in that regard right bruno yep so i mean thank you it's uh i guess what i'm saying is it's low impact if we merge it um or I guess so. uh low I risk so. if we merge it. it could be high impact if we merge it that's good uh high impact's good in this case um, mm. But yeah, I, I definitely agree. Like, if we want, if you want to give people a chance to review, comment, discuss, share any points they might have, thoughts, um, yeah, we'll leave it for a little bit before we um, probably merge everything. Um, and I, I've shared my opinion before, uh, but you know, yep. that was last week. This is this week. I like it. I think it's a good idea. I think having a historical log of when uh, changes are happening is really helpful. Something that isn't necessarily just um, the GitHub logs or the GitHub history is really useful and can help pinpoint those changes. So I think it's really valuable. I like it. I'm more than happy to merge it. Uh, I'm actually gonna, I should probably comment on this uh, in the actual pull request so that I can be a voice of reason here too. So yeah, I'll do that you, after man. we wrap up here. <laughs> um, but yeah, still, still, uh, still available, still, still there. Um, Nothing has been merged as of yet. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Bruno. And thank you for the work uh, you've been doing with the update CLI overall. That's been really great to see 
Um, just a little pull request coming in here and there to update things like that's really nice. And uh, I think it's just really cool to see that go from like not existing to you just putting it together and having it be there. Um, oh. Yeah, it's really neat. Thank you, Kevin, uh, except it makes more work for you. <laughs> but it keeps I mean, the documentation up to date. Yeah, but that but it also does the work that I would have to do to go through a review, find that oh, and update yeah. it. It just does the updating <laughs> much better me. this way. Yeah. So I can just review and approve or mark in a review and approve. And it's actually probably a lot easier. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, uh, and the last note on the agenda here is Docs Office Hours Asia, I think, are canceled for this evening. I don't have the event on the calendar. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's just make sure here and see if it was removed from the, account, the Jenkins calendar. Uh, oh, it is still oh. there. So uh, it could still be happening. Um, Mark wasn't exactly sure last time we spoke and last time we were yeah. here. So... Uh, it may or not be, may or may not happen. Um, if you decide you want to show up, feel free. But um, Mark may uh, not be hosting that this evening. So, words to the wise: uh, if no one shows up and if it's not happening, uh, it is canceled for this week. It was just okay. I, I don't know much about um, the agenda in the U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. I even don't know if the term is correct, but uh, do you have any coming bank holidays or Thanksgiving that would happen on a Thursday or Friday morning um, for the next weeks? What a great call out, Bruno, because I'm pretty sure November 23rd or November 20 or November 30th is uh, Thanksgiving. I forget exactly, um, but that is a few weeks away. So, um, yeah. And uh, I, that. I don't know about okay. bank holidays uh, in for Asia, though. Mm. Uh, oh, and we also think, are. OK, US will change time on the 5th of November. So next week meeting won't change, but the week after uh, the time may change depending where you live. Uh, which it looks like it does change. Um, well, that is, yeah, so that might be a little, so not next week, like you said, but the week after uh, we move over to, I forget whether daylight savings time ends or starts, I don't care. Um, it's annoying and yeah, but yeah. <laughs> that's happening. Yes, and uh, it will happen sooner in Europe. So next week for EU folks, mm -hmm. I don't know if it will be <laughs> earlier or later, but that won't be the same time anymore. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. The time zones are gonna, time frames are gonna change, but um, for the for the EU US docs office hours, it'll just be moved back and moved earlier an hour. Um, I okay. don't, yeah, I don't know how that how that will fall for the uh, Asian docs <laughs> office hours. So we'll see. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, I just remembered since we have a few minutes before we wrap up today, yep. uh, Jenkins Governance Board and the officer elections mm. are currently go, uh, open. So the nomination period closes tomorrow, October 27th. Uh, if you have a nomination, please, please, please go to the voter registration group and submit that nomination. Uh, voter registration itself is open until November 5th, so you still have some more time to register to vote. Uh, but uh, there's going to be a uh, there's a group to sign up for. Uh, you'll join here instead of leave. You can, and then you'll be eligible to vote. Uh, and there's a blog post that uh, Alexander Brandes had submitted that goes through the timeframes uh, and just the uh, explanation of how to go about doing the voting, nomination, et cetera. Um, so yeah, so nomination of candidates is over tomorrow at the uh, stroke of midnight and voters registration is open for another week after that. Um, last time I checked, we only have one candidate for each open position. Mm -hmm. uh, so if that is still the case after tomorrow, uh, there may not there may or may not be a voting process. If we don't have two candidates to vote for, we can't really vote for that. So it may reflect this past election cycle where we had only one candidate for each position mm -hmm. and they were uh, by default granted that position. So 
If you'd like to see the democratic process in action, please submit any nominations you have before the end of the day tomorrow. Otherwise, we'll see. But uh, yeah, no, outside of that, um, they got everything's going swimmingly for uh, the process. It's just, we, we would love people to voice their opinions or suggest anything if they have it. And um, to vote, your contract, you just have to have contributed to Jenkins in some way, shape, or form prior to September 1st, 2023. Any sort of contribution. It doesn't have to be a pull request. It could be helping in the forums. It could be doing uh, events and organizing, uh, social gatherings, giving talks. Um, there's, a, there's a plethora of ways to contribute to Jenkins. So as long as you've done any one of those things, you're, you're part of the community and you can, should and can vote. All right, so that covers everything I had on the agenda for today. Bruno, anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up? No, thank you, Gavin. Okay, sounds good. So uh, then we'll go ahead and stop the recording in just a moment. The uh, video will be available in about 24 to 48 hours. Uh, and yeah, until next week, take care, stay safe. Uh, and yeah, have fun with uh, all your Jenkins doings.